Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I'm your host, Sherrard. Hope you're having a wonderful Sunday evening and that you had a beautiful weekend. Today's show is very special. All shows are special on the Sherrard Show, but this one is very touching. It's very touching because we have two wonderful ladies on the show who are doing big things um, in the industry. One is a world-renowned author. She has written a book called Believing in Myself, and I am America's Most Wanted. And we're, and we're going to talk about both of those today. She is a children's author who's done wonderful things. And now she's here on the Sherrard Show to give us the reason why she's so motivated by the wonderful children, as well as talking about her pain is her gain. The lovely Erica Pullen is on the show. We'll talk to her in a moment. And then also we have a wonderful young lady who is very inspirational as well. She's an artist. She's also um, a Christian woman who's proud to wear her faith on the sleeve of her shirt as well as on her collar. Um, she has been singing for many years and she stopped by the Sherrard Show. Jim, the artist, is here as well. Hello, Jim. How are you? Hi. How are you? Good. Now, the Sherrard Show is brought to you by Essence Television. Essence Television, ladies and gentlemen, is the home for the Sherrard Show, where you can see all of the episodes of the Sherrard Show. It's actually my own network. I'm so excited. Um, we are looking for um, and accepting submissions for content, as well as people who have fashionable, upscale content to have on the show. You can see all the biggest interviews from Stevie Wonder to the Isley Brothers, the Manhattans, as well as this episode on the Sherrard Show. Just go to Essence TV to add it to your Amazon, your Roku, or even your smart device. And then also it's brought to you by iHeartRadio. If you missed this broadcast on television, you can also listen and always listen to it on iHeartRadio. While you're driving as a podcast, just keep, uh, type in the keyword, the Sherrard Show, on your screen there. Now, ladies and gentlemen, oftentimes you have people who have wonderful careers in life and you sit there and think if they've ever gone through or had a bad day in their life. But the thing that you must understand is that going through things, many times the journey is more exciting than a destination. We have a lady that's here that's um, been writing books for many years and she had world, world renowned recognition. She is America's most wanted, but um, she's also very desirable as an author. And she stopped by the Sherrard Show to give us a little insight. Erica Pullen, how are you this evening? I am blessed and highly favored. Thank you so much for having me on your show, Sherrod. Thank you so much. You're very, you're very welcome. We're so excited to have you on. Now, I love the background, first and foremost. Tell us a little bit about how you got so inspired about writing kids. But what got you started in writing books about kids and for kids? You may need a bottle of wine, but anyway, but <laughs> no, honestly. Um, so I think... Um, as a, well, I don't think, I know, um, as a young girl, I was so bullied because of my dark skin. I was called Dark Vader. Um, you know, it just, it, it really gets up under my skin. I'm Sealy from the color purple. I was, I was bullied, period. Um, ugly, uh, just because I was dark skinned. So um, I've tried, I should be actually rich from the bleaching um, <laughs> companies um, because I tried every bleach possible. I even soaked my, my body in Clorox bleach um, just because I thought I was a, a, a ugly duckling. I thought that, you know, no one liked me because of the color of my skin. And, you know, even as an adult and as a grandmother and as a child, um, I just, you, you know, you still go through those um, segments where you think, oh my goodness, am I so ugly? But with that being said, I just happened to be up one night. I, I could not sleep and I was watching a reality show and um, R&B something. And um, I was looking at all these beautiful absolutely stunning women, stunning. Like, I mean, they woke up flawless in the words of Beyonce. Um, they were gorgeous. Um, their hair was flawless. They, their makeup was flawless. Their bodies were flawless. And I said, now what are we teaching our babies across the nation? That what we, this is the, the, the image we have to look in order to be considered beautiful. And so I believe I like, it was in September of um, 2018, I believe. And I just got up and went downstairs because my house was so quiet. 
at three o'clock in the morning and I started writing um, because I said, the devil is a liar. We're gonna change that stereotype. We are beautiful in whatever complexion or hair texture or whatever we are. And, and so I just started writing. And so that has been my logo for three years now is believing in myself. And um, because of that book, I am an, an award-winning international. My book is in uh, six countries um, because of that book. Um, but just, you know, people can relate to it, you know, whether you're skinny or whether you're thick and but we are all beautiful. And so that's what I encourage my babies as a public speaker. But that's how I started. My Very good. Book. Very good. And we'll get you in, in in a minute, Jim. Now, what age was it, um, Erica, that people started calling you um, unattractive yeah. or ugly in school? Right. What, what age did that start? Um, again, I'm a grandmother. So um, I want to say in a late 70s, early 80s, because back in, and I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So, um, you know, light skin was in, they were beautiful, just, you know, drop dead gorgeous. And so I found myself, and this is my perspective. It's not everybody's story, right? Um, this is a story that I went through, but I, I found myself surrounding myself in the 80s, early 80s, late 70s with all light skin um, friends because I just I thought, thought they were gorgeous. You know, like I wanted to be, um, a, a, I wanted to be with them. I wanted to be their friends. So I would say um, late 70s, early 80s. Now, um, Jim, you've kind of, um, now you're a Caucasian female, but you've also experienced people talking down to you and telling you you can't sing and you'll never make it and things like that. Tell us a little bit about your experience, Jim, in that, in that arena. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, well, I went to a Baptist Christian school most of my life and that I experienced a lot of bullying and stuff growing up. Um, people saying that I wasn't good enough, pretty enough not talented enough, you know, and then, um, of course, you know, you know, the industry, I've been in the industry for years and, you know, with that comes a lot of haters and, you know, I mean, I have a lot of people that believe in my talent, but I have a lot of people that have tried to put me down mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, I've heard the worst, <laughs> I've had articles written about me, <laughs> people accuse me of terrible, terrible things and, um, try to drag my name through the mud. And through it all, I just, I know who I am and I know that I am pretty inside and, and out. That's why in my album's name is the light within. And mm -hmm. I found that inner light to shine and it doesn't really matter what they think at the end of the day, all oh, those no. negative opinions mm -hmm. have made me who I am, you know, that I wrote my first album that got shelved and I will be able to put this out later eventually it was called shattered mirror because my perfect mirror shattered I wrote about it I put it back together and then I found that light within so my testimony is yeah you know and and people and I modeled I acted I am a, a pretty girl by you know society standards what they think but I and, and also what I think but I I faced a lot of hate a lot of people that don't like me don't like the people people I hang out with, the choice of boyfriends, that I, I, I love um, all races. I have no hate in my heart and um, all the things I, I've been accused. I mean, one, one of the most recent things that I was accused of, and you guys are going to laugh, is that I think that I'm black. <laughs> and I was like, no, I just have soul and I have a lot of black brothers and sisters. <laughs> and now, now, um, now, Jim, and this is for you, both of you all. Let me start with you, Jim. So, Jim, how were you able to use those dark moments in your life? Now, you can, there's a saying that says, sticks and stones can break my bones, but names will never hurt me. That's a false thing because oh, they on, can man. truly hurt you. Um, and p especially those closest to you, they can hit you with an uppercut that you can't recover from, it feels like. Mm -hmm. So for you, Jim, when did you start turning that into a positive with all of the neg negativity? Well, the hate is my motivation. I think it's the driving force, like for all the people, you know, and I even have people coming now and be like, oh my God, you're proving everybody wrong. You're making everybody a fool. Like a few years ago, you know, people were coming at me saying that it would never happen. Now they're just watching silently. 
and they're like wow she really is a superstar she really is who she always said she was and i'm just kind of quieting them little by little and god's helping me do that of course mm -hmm. um that's my motivation and my motivation is to shine my light and help others and you know all those insecurities are slowly they're slowly going away mm -hmm. um but yeah i still have you know you know, I still have dreams at night about them picking on me and telling me that I'm nothing. And um, that'll always haunt me. And maybe, you know, and maybe there is this burning need to, uh, to show everybody, oh, well, you were wrong. But my, yeah, that's my motivation. I've turned all that and turned that into light and love and positivity and shining my light. And, you know, nothing's gonna, nothing's gonna dim my shine. Very good. Now, what about you, Erica? Um, when those kids, were on the playground and all teaming up to talk bad about you and saying all these wicked things about you. Kids can be so brutal. But how were you able to begin to start turning that into a positive? Wow. Well, it, it, it had, it, it took some years. Um, I think, um, and, and shout out to my mother, because um, she always had me in the creative and performing arts schools. And um, one day I just I came home with this flyer and said, mom, I, I, I wanna be in the Pittsburgh Miss Black Teenage Pageant. I was so insecure. Like I said, I thought it was an ugly duckling, but I knew I was kind of talented. So I never thought that I would be um, the youngest at 14 years old to place in the 15 finalists ever. And, um, and so right there, um, it actually started to build my confidence because I'm looking at all these beautiful girls and, and little black me. And I'm like, oh my goodness, like I, I'm one of the 15 finalists. And so um, I think right there at 14 is, is where I said, you know what, it, it necessarily doesn't matter if you're dark skin. Um, so that's when it, at 14, I was still like, okay, I'm ugly, but I'm getting there. And so, yeah, and, and so that's really, cause I kind of put my head up how like, yeah, for all the naysayers, you know, and for all the people who talked about me now, look at me now, you know, um, just like Joan stated. And so, yeah, so I think, at 14, that's when I realized, like, wait a minute, you know? But you know that- I am beautiful. <laughs> well, you, well, you know, you're absolutely stunning. And um, I wish oh, I was there you. back then to tell you that. Absolutely. But I'm just, I'm just gonna let you know, you as well as Jim, you're absolutely beautiful. And, and God don't make no jump. Just remember Amen. that. God Amen. don't make no jump. Come on now. Now, uh, we, Amen. We'll, we'll start preaching later, but I gotta wait till some of the deacons bring the, the basket around. So wait, wait till the deacons get the basket. No, anyway. <laughs> But um, the thing is that, um, Erica, you doing something, it shows great character in you and Jim, but I'll start with you, Erica, because many kids who were tormented as kids become very resentful to other children or people um, or, or, or anybody. They become recluse hermits, very resentful, very vindictive, but you use that as a positive and started writing books. Now, when did yeah. that begin? Amen, like I said, I would have woke up at three o'clock in the morning and I was watching a reality show and I noticed that every woman on the show was a cookie cutter. And I'm like, well, she's beautiful. Oh my gosh, she's beautiful. Oh my gosh, she's beautiful. And I'm like, what are we teaching our kids? Because that is not how I wake up. I'm sorry, I wake up terrible. So, um, like I said, at three o'clock in the morning, I said, you know what? The devil is a liar. I need to change this stereotype. Everybody doesn't wake up, you know, flawless. We, we, just, we just don't, we can't, you know, we, we can't look like um, the Beyonce's and the Kim Kardashian's. And actually um, at the end of my book, Believing in Myself, it says, so look out. It says, God made no mistakes when he created me. So look out Beyonce, Taylor Swift, and Kim Kardashian, because here comes, and the baby writes her name right there. And Beautiful. I'm believing Beautiful. in myself. And so, you know, it was the point that, listen, I don't have to look like the Beyonce's or, or the Kim Kardashian's. Yes, are they beautiful? 
Yes, absolutely gorgeous. But I can look like me and still be beautiful. So that's what happened. I just happened to be watching a reality show and said I wanted to change that stereotype because I know what I went through as a child. Well, I had um uh, I had um Tina Knowles on the show before. And um, you know, one thing that you have to understand is that um Beyonce looks like Beyonce before she when she wakes up. Right. Beyonce, but right. she turns into Beyonce there with all go. the beautiful things. No, and it's no slight. It's just like you said, people oh, yeah. don't look stunning when they wake up, but exactly. it's what they turn into. But um, the thing is that, you know, and the, the comments are blowing up right now in the Sherrard show, but um, the guys are quite eyeing both of you all, especially you saying how beautiful you are. And we'll get to that in a second, uh, Erica, because like I said, yeah. you're Yes, they're blowing up. Um, and Jim will come out of the dark and they'll be able to see her as well, hopefully sometime in the show. But Jim, now when, at what point were you able to turn the lemons into lemonade um, when they were critical of you, Jim? Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, hmm. Can you kind of re reiterate the question a little bit, Sharon? Yes. So I yes. can. So, at what point yeah. did you start? You know, when you're a boxer and you get knocked down, yeah. at some point you don't like being knocked down. You want to get back up and uh, and avoid that embarrassment, that pain of being knocked down. But how were you yeah. able to, or when did you start turning your negativity into positivity? I would say, I would say when I started becoming a teenager and I started like becoming very pretty and people started to notice oh she's not a geek she's not just smart she's actually pretty and you know and talented and then of course when I started to model um in college and all that it was just it was like a process and I just you know and then getting in the recording studio and um starting to work with very big people in the music industry and I just kind of like because Gem is my media name and was chosen for me through the music people, my music um, family, but I was, I was Chrissy Morrow. I was always Chrissy Morrow, but they said they named me gem because they felt that I deserved that name, that I was a gem, that I shine, that I'm beautiful, that I emanate light. And I guess I earned my stripes and it took me a, a while to get them. And then I finally did, you know, mm -hmm. so it was now a process. Well, it, but the process, you know, um, and I'm, I'm going to say this to both you all, I'll, I'll to kick it back to you, Erica. Um, I know, Erica, and you don't have to necessarily say yes or no, but I know at certain points um, when it got so brutal and kids were so merciful, you probably didn't even want to live anymore. You probably just wanted some, so many kids, they end it all because you think about this. In eighth grade, in high school, you know, when you want somebody to like you and love you and, you know, and this and that, it can mean the world when the very person you thought would like you is the one that rips you up so bad. It can, it can, it can take your childhood to a direction that can just knock you off your course if you don't have a strong foundation of mom and dad getting back to you, uncle or auntie telling you, listen, you're beautiful, don't listen to that. But when kids don't have that, they can go to a dark road down a path that they never can recover from. Is that correct, mm -hmm. Erica? Amen and amen. And you know, Sharon, I have, um, when you said that I had tears in my eyes because I have the marks if you can see them, um, to remind me. And I was 13 years old when I did this. Oh, um, God. And, and so, but it was so goofy, right? Um, I took an urn um, and, and again, I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So I kind of like put the urn on my arm and then I took four Tylenol and thought I was gonna go somewhere because I oh. did not believe in myself. I couldn't stand myself. And so, when I woke up and I'm like, uh, what's going on, you know? And so I look back 35 years ago, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I'm like, Erica Lynn, baby, baby. And I said, Whew. and I said that I promise that I will never ever, as long as I have breath, allow a child that's in my presence um, to go through that. And that's why I share my story. That's why I'm a public speaker. That's why before COVID, um, you know, people were shipping for me, sending for me. And, um, you know, but of course now, so I have like three virtual um, upcoming engagements, speaking engagements, but 
That's why I get back to my babies because I want them to know how beautiful they are. I don't want them to go through what Erica went through. And Jim, to your point, you know, I hear you saying, you know, when you became beautiful and, you know, and, you know, even at 48 for me, I still don't think I'm beautiful. I think I'm wise, right? I think I'm I think you're beautiful. Well, you know, <laughs> thank you. But I, but I don't. I think I'm sharp, you know, honey, I could throw on something and, and baby, but I don't well, you think I'm beautiful. Um, and so, you know, but be, because I have that, I'm so passionate about my babies across the nation to encourage them. Because again, at 48, who should still have to feel like, you know, like they don't believe, you know, or, or I believe in myself. I believe in myself, but I'm not confident, you know, as far as my, you know, my looks, my skin complexion. Erica, let me interrupt you for something. I know. I believe. I I don't want to be rude. I normally don't interrupt my guests, but um, I wanted to ask you something, Erica, because why do you feel at 48 years old you're not beautiful? Now, now hold on before you answer that. Um, It's a tougher thing to say to yourself that I'm wise, but. I think it's easier for you, for somebody to say they're beautiful, or at least they feel they're beautiful inside. Yeah. So why is it that at 48, you still can't say that you're beautiful? I don't know. I, I, I think just, you know, even though I preach it, even though I can talk it, um, because of social media, because of the media, because of the vid- videos, I just, you know, some days I look at these beautiful young ladies and I am the first one to give any woman a compliment you know any woman you know the first thing i do is look at look 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 at them and say you are absolutely stunning i wouldn't care what they look like just to let you know that i believe in them um and so i i think it's still um society it's not that i i hate myself because i love erica i love erica lynn um i i just think that I, I never thought I was beautiful. So it just kind of stuck with me. But I think I'm short. Like I said, I think I I hold myself up, you know, high and I'm you are amazing. <laughs> Thank you. You are Jill. amazing. Um, but yeah, um, I, I think I'm a lady. I have a walk, you know, my husband just told me, you and not walk. So I have this walk. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, there's still that little girl. Um inside of me that's still like you know that I'm still an ugly duckling so I kind of like put a mask on you know what I'm but, saying but you have to remember something though um Erica that the ugly duckling turned into a beautiful swan yeah amen and, amen. and, you're, and you're now living as that swan so don't let anybody take that away from you at all mm-hmm. we are talking to the lovely Erica Poland as well as Jim the artist on the Sherrod show about my pain is my gain these ladies are talking about how they went through some tough times with kids ridiculing them tell, telling them they'll never be anything talking down to them and now look at them um now let's go to you Jim really quickly now Jim um you with your singing and being an artist now um has that given you new confidence? Do you feel confident? Or are you like Erica, where in the back of your mind, you still feel those pains from your childhood? Well, this, is, this is really interesting. I swear God has, <laughs> I mean, okay. I was kind of upset because I didn't get my hair done today. Um, and so I was like, ugh. And I'm in West Palm Beach and it's like freezing outside. And I, I had it all planned out that I was going to be by the water. And it was me warm tonight and everything and so I'm by the water but I'm in my winter coat (laughs) and it's like totally backfired and like you can put the light I think I'm in the light now and like I have my like head but I just was so like in the dark because I didn't want I I know it's so funny but I had no confidence of um because I didn't look like how I wanted to look tonight so I was like you know what whatever I'll just do the audio you know and and then she, she Erica was talking about this and I'm like how crazy is that so I mean you can see if you could see me now like I'm gonna look like I'm in a blizzard (laughs) it's really cold in West Palm Beach and I wasn't prepared for it for it to be this cold tonight so Mm -hmm. but my question though to you Jim is have your music career and all of the accolades you're receiving now has that increased or upped your self-esteem oh and and I was segueing into that I'm sorry 
I mean, I just wanted to tell you that because it was so interesting that she said that. Yes, I believe that as I became Jem, even when I was just Chrissy Morrow, and as I became Jem, they it uh it just the confidence went up, 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 mm-hmm. because I was doing um everything that I'm supposed to do, like it it's. I do have, yes, I have much more confidence than, than I did when I started out, but I still have shaky ground. Like, like, just like Erica was saying, like, just like tonight, like I was like, oh, my hair's not done. Oh my God. Like, what are they going to think? You know what I mean? Because there's so much pressure in this industry to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And it's like, ah, yeah. So, well, well, the thing is that, um, comparisonitis is a disease that many suffer from. And yeah. we have to get out of that boat because comparison, really comparing don't. yourself, you, Erica, comparing yourself to um, Nia Long and you, uh, Jim, comparing yourself to a Kardashian or whatever, they got nothing on you and you got nothing on them. Come but on you now. have to stop <laughs> thinking that they have something on you and because that's it's true. not a fair comparison, okay? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And you know, that. that's what I preach. That's what I preach. You know, um, even at the and, and, and let's not get it twisted. I believe in me, right? I, I, I can't preach it um, and not believe in me. But with me believing in me, I still don't have to think that I'm j- just gorgeous. I don't think that. It, 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 I don't think I'll ever think it. I think I'm sharp. Yes. I think I'm poised. I think I'm articulate. I think I'm a lot of things. Um, but I, I, I don't think that um, I'm just just this beautiful lady. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I think I'm okay at, at you know, where I am in my life. You know, forget all the bleaching agents and, you know, all that stuff. Like, I'm, I'm so over that. And, and that's what I preach to my babies. But Jim, you said something, if you don't mash you all real quick, that I do with my, my own shows, um, Kudos for Kids. But, and, and it helps me all the time. Um, but you know, every night I have to remind myself that, you know what, Erica, despite all the negative, negativity in the world and the naysayers, I believe in myself, right? And so I tell my babies when I'm interviewing them, you know, before you go to bed, brush your feet, bro, good, stand up tall and say, I believe in myself. And I'm saying that to you, you know, with your gorgeous, and you know this because you've said it several times on the show, um, that you could have put your light on and allowed us to see your beautiful face. You know, but I want you to believe in yourself at all times. And, and you know, I just wanted to, you know, from a, a professional to a professional to, you know, kind of give you some love right there because Excellent. I'm actually looking oh, forward to you, meeting you. <laughs> Excellent. Well, you will, you will definitely have a chance to do that. Um, these are some wonderful ladies. Now, we're going to take a few questions because we are kind of back on time. Um, so we're going to take a few questions from our audience. Um, this question is for Donna. This is for you, Erica. This is Donna from North Carolina. Donna says, you are absolutely stunning and you actually look like Erica Badu. Her question is, <laughs> her question is, that's correct. Her question is, where can she purchase some of your books for her little daughter? Absolutely. Um, so, um, believing in myself, mm-hmm. if she wants a signed copy and a t-shirt, um, DM, DM me on my Facebook, um, at believing in myself or Erica, E-R-I-C-A, Poulin, and I will get you a signed copy and a t-shirt. If you just want to hurry up and get it, um, amazon.com, believing in myself, hyphen Erica Poulin, so it pulls up my name. Thank you, Donna. God bless you. I, I truly appreciate it. But. Very good. Very good, Donna. She does look like Erica Badu. All right, Jim, this is from you. This Jim, this is from Carl from Nevada. He says, um, Jim, congratulations on your successful career and also for being very inspirational to others. His question is, where can we listen or purchase some of your music, Jim? Okay. Well, we're in the process of many things. Um, the album, The Light Within, uh, is coming out. My Shattered Mirror album, the demos and some other demos are available on Reverb Nation, YouTube, and SoundCloud right now. So, um, um, and there are probably other places too, but those are demos that aren't mixer master that I wrote, sang, co-produced, arranged, all of it, but they're still 
pretty good. So um, my SoundCloud is Gem Jewel of the Pop World. My Reverb Nation is Chrissy Morrow, K-R-I-S-S-Y-M-O-R-R-O-W. Mm-hmm. And the SoundCloud is Gem Jewel of the Pop World, G-E-M, J-E-W-E-L of the Pop World. And, um, also, and also YouTube is Gem Chrissy Morrow, G-E-M space, K-R-I-S-S-Y space, M-O-R-R-O-W. Very good. Okay, well, we probably need a PhD to follow Jim, but it is on your monitor. She got so much going on. <laughs> but we, uh, you can see it on your monitor. Sorry. to be able to keep up in terms of all she got going. Ha ha! Very um, funny. All right, great. We got time for two more questions. Okay, Erica, this is for you. This is for Alexandra from Michigan. Alexandra says to you, "You, I have also been teased when I was growing up in Flint, Michigan," and she's saying, "But I almost also thought about committing suicide." But now I thank you that you've inspired me to know that I'm beautiful within. Tell me, tell me, very good. And and her question is, um, I'm glad my hair is done. (laughs) Her question is, what do you do when you go to that dark place from your childhood? How do you get out of it? First of all, you are beautiful. And that's why I lean back because I get, oh my goodness. Like I said, I'm so passionate about this. So if you ever need to talk, email me at ELP is in pod, believing in myself.com. And trust me, I I respond to all my emails. But with that being said, I pray, right? Um, I think I, I, I pray and I work more. I work more because my thing is if, I still feel like I'm this ugly duckling, then how can I be the positive motivational speaker and motivate my children? So it makes me want to improve myself. So I don't know if you're spiritual, but the the first thing I do is um, I pray. So yeah, if that helps. And, And if you need to talk, email me. <laughs> okay. Um, her, her information will be on a monitor. All right. We have more time for last question. Now, this is for both of you all, uh, Jim and Erica. And this is from Michael. This is from Michael from Los Angeles. His question is, um, what was the most devastating thing that someone ever said to you? And how were you able to cope with that? Um, let's start with you, Jim. What was one of the most devastating things somebody ever said to you? And how were you able to cope with it? Oh, boy. Um, well, I had a music video that, um, that's still on YouTube that I, you know, I took great pride in and it was my, um, song someday. And I like, I took $2,000 of my hard earned money and shot it with my people with in New York with my music people and designed an outfit for it and wrote the treatment and, and, you know, sang, co-wrote or, or no sang, wrote and arranged and everything, the song. It was all mine and everything. And then put it up there. And every I had to literally like like shut off the comments because of the evil hate that came. Now this was a few years ago. Now people are aren't being so mean to me, but they were saying terrible things like I'm a wannabe Britney Spears. Um, I'm fat, I'm ugly, I have no talent, I can't sing. Oh, the list went on and on. And it was so terrible because it wasn't bad at all. And it was it was just something different and yeah. Okay. It wasn't like huge, a huge budget, but it was still people to this day love it. So, but it broke, it really broke my spirit because I was so excited to, to, you know, put something that out there that I worked so hard for and to see people it just be met with such jealousy and hate and just evilness. It was, it was devastating. It was terrible, but you now, know, I rose above it. So very good, yeah. very good, very good. And what about you, Erica? How were, what was one of the most devastating things that was ever said to you? And how did you cope? I mean, what hasn't been said to me? Um, you know, I'm black, I'm, I'm ugly, you know, um, I'm dark, ba- dark Vader, um, I'm see, not now, um, I'm Seely. Um, I mean, you know, just uh, I want to say about. <laughs> 10, 15 years ago, you know, I was black and I looked like a a man. So people still have this, um, you know, this complexion issue. Um, But I am so comfortable with where I am now in my own skin that it doesn't matter. And, 
You know, Sherrod, I say, like you said, this is the show, baby. Look at me now. Um, you know, and and I'm just gonna keep on trying and you know, that's why I'm so passionate about my babies. But wow, it's, it's, it's really impressive and very touching. Uh, we can't get to all your questions. We hope we wish we could, but we can't tonight. But if you do have any more questions, you can always uh, follow the monitor to email Erica. If you have any more questions or comments, definitely buy her book. Um, definitely petition to have her out in your city when the COVID is over so she can be able to speak to you and encourage you as well. And then also um, definitely have Jim. Um, reach out to her. She's a wonderful young lady as well. Um, she's been through so much that she needs to put it in a book as well because she's very dear to me as well. And you want to be able to um, hear more about her story. Um, but really quick, I want to tell you something that you might in in inspire all you all who are watching the Sherrod Show. Um, in the book, in the Bible, Songs of Solomon, Queen of Sheba is um, the woman that Solomon is speaking to. And they're having a romantic um, a, a romantic soliloquy, soliloquy among each other. But Queen of Sheba was one of the most beautiful women ever lived, but she was as dark as night. When you look at that, she, she's, she's wondering, she's self-conscious about her darkness, and she's asking Solomon, do you really love me in spite of me being as dark as night? Oh. And he romances her and says, your darkness is as beautiful as the night. Is not the night beautiful as the day? And he makes her feel like a wonderful, beautiful queen. Solomon had 700 wives and uh, 300 concubines, but Queen of Sheba, he loved more than all of them mm. because she is beautiful. My point is that God don't make no junk, ladies and gentlemen, and always trust in him. You're as beautiful as the morning sun because you're in his glory. Now, I, I thank you all for your kind time and attention on the Sherrod Show. Um, definitely submit and also subscribe to our newsletter, which is on your screen on the Sherrod Show newsletter to see all of the latest episodes and guests that are coming on the show. On our next episode of the Sherrod Show, we will have Mr. Master P stop by the Sherrod Show to talk about his career as well as him shifting everything to his nephew and not his son. I'm Sherrod. In the meantime, have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, Jim. Bye, Sherrod. God bless you guys. Thank you. We love positivity. Bye. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Sherrod Show. If you like additional information about our episodes, you can log on to thesherrodshow.com. You can also check us out on social media, like us on Facebook, look at our YouTube video, subscribe to our newsletter at Essence television networks at gmail.com if you would like to get information to the host sherrod you can email him at the once again thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week